about the ways in which works are relevant to our salvation. Amen? The ways in which works are relevant to our salvation. Hallelujah. The first way I would like to mention to you guys, and the most important reason, is love. Amen? Love. You know, Sister Denise brought out in in her message last week about how the Bible says that Yahweh is love. Right? Amen? And we see in Scripture also that Yeshua himself said that if you love me, keep my commandments. If a man say that he loved me but keep not my commandments, then he is a liar and the love of Yahweh is not in him. So this is love, that you keep my commandments. Hallelujah. It's all about love. The keeping of the commandments. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's about, it's, it's, this is our, our, the main core and source of Yahweh's law and his commandments that we keep. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 22. Is everyone there? Matthew chapter 22. We're going to start with verse 37. Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. You see, we have here Yeshua, as I mentioned before, said that to him, how we communicate love to him, how he receives love from us is by the keeping of his commandments. Amen? And we see here the first and second great commandments. And I would like to say that these two great commandments, Yeshua himself said it, all the law and the the prophets are are represented in this. All the commands can be placed in in one of these two categories. And I would call these these, um, one of two categories of how we communicate love to Yeshua. One is you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, your mind, your soul. It's directly, you directly to Yahweh, you know, you love him. You can see example of this in the Ten Commandments. The first four, you know, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not take my name in vain. Thou shalt not make any graven images. Remember the Sabbath day to keep holy. These are commandments where you directly, you know, from you to Yahweh, You are loving him. You're showing and expressing your love with your time, your worship, your adoration to him only, to him alone. You know? And then, you know, and and it says, thou shalt do this with all your heart, mind, and soul. In other words, we can't, Yahweh doesn't just want us to do it outward with our body, you know, keeping of his commandments, because that's not true love. He, He wants us to do it inward. You know, evolving our heart, our mind, you know, you know, with all our strength and soul, an inward love of him. If you just do an outward show of his commandments and of, of the loving Yahweh, Yahweh, he does not consider that love. You're not loving him as according to his law, you know. I mean, you look at the children of Israel in the Old Testament, they were keeping his Sabbaths and stuff. And Yahweh, you notice he always says, my Sabbaths, these are my Sabbaths. But then he said, your Sabbaths, your feast days, your offerings are an abomination to me. He said, because they weren't keeping it. They were going through the motions outwardly of keeping the Sabbath and, and, and giving offerings and stuff. And, but in their heart, their heart was far from them. Their heart was into worldly loves and pleasures and, and fleshly things. You know, so when we love Yahweh, our Elohim, you know, directly, we must do so with all our heart or mind or soul and we, or it's not love. Amen? You know? And, and if we don't love him like we should, we need to repent, both inwardly and outwardly. 
We need to do like David said. We need, y'all created me a clean heart, oh y'all, and renew a right spirit. Because we need his help to love him inside, don't we? Do we not? We need him to give, put a new heart in us, and re- renew a right spirit, a spirit that loves him within me. That's what David had to do. Amen? Because his heart, he had gone away into, into sin, into, into the fleshly lust thereof. And the second commandment, the second great way of, of loving Yahweh, and Sister Denise also brought this out in her message, is by loving your neighbor. You, should, you should see this in the Ten Commandments. The, the last six, you know, is honor thy father and thy mother. Um, do not kill do not, or do not murder, do not steal, do, uh, what is, do not commit adultery, do not lie, do not covet. You know, all these also are, is about loving your neighbor. And the sister Denise brought out last week that, that we, when we see our neighbor, when it comes to loving, we, we see that he needs food, we need to feed him. You know, when we see our neighbor is, is naked, we need to clothe him. For, you know, if we see that they are sick, we need to care for them. For in all these things you do to your, the least of your neighbors, you also are loving Yeshua, Elohim. All right, am I right? You know? And, and, so, and this too, we must do with all our heart, mind, and soul. You know, with all, not just the outward thing, but inwardly. Amen? You know, and, 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 or else we are not truly loving Yahweh or Elohim. And in these two Way, forms of loving Yahweh, all the prophet, all the law, all the commandments can be categorized. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Or Denise said, if we don't love him like we should, we become like the guy with the talents who gets thrown into outer darkness. Or like the goats who are outcast outside the kingdom of Yahweh instead of the sheep that are welcome. You know? We don't want to be like that. So if you want your works to be relevant, you got to have love. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's turn with me to 1 Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13. Start with verse 1. Paul says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. For though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. What is Paul saying here? He's talking about gifts, right? You you know, you can, you know, speaking with men, the tongues, the angle, he's talking about works, giving, you know, uh, you know, people doing good, good works to their neighbors, giving to, you know, um, gifts to the poor and even sacrificing their body. I mean, there's plenty. But, but he said, without love, this profiteth me nothing. This, in Yahweh's eyes, this, there's no benefit to me without love. I mean, there's plenty of people who don't know Yahweh who, who, who uh, do good works, right? You got, you know, Oprah Winfrey. Many celebrities do all kind of good works. You know, many people... Uh, Give their body, as it says, to, you know, sacrifice the body. Soldiers for love of country, you know, you know, limbs blown off and everything. Even make the supreme sacrifice, for, you know, for love of uh, their, their faith, Allah. All over the world, people doing this. But if they don't have love, the type of love that Paul's talking about here, it profits them nothing. There is no benefit. What, is, what kind of love is Paul talking about here? He's talking about a love that cannot be imitated. A love that cannot be faked. A love that, that comes only through the Holy Spirit. It is the, it, is the, it is the love of Elohim. The genuine love of Elohim. You know, it is the love that is Elohim. The very part, essence of his character as expressed through his law. As far as loving the Father with all your heart, mind, and soul and loving your neighbor. It is, this is his love shed abroad in the hearts of the believer. Amen? 
Hey, man, that's what the kind of love that Yahweh's talking about, that Paul's talking about here. Hallelujah. The, the lo- kind of love that, that, cannot, that is only manifested in a believer that is led by the Spirit of Yahweh. Amen? This is the love that if you can do all this other stuff. You can even have the gifts of just working. Yahweh can use the gifts in someone, but that doesn't mean their heart's right, does it? Look at Bellum. Bellum was a prophet. Yahweh used him. He spoke the word of Yahweh. But Bellum's heart was not right. He did not have the love according to, he did not love Yahweh with all his heart and his mind and all his soul. He did not love, you know, his neighbor, like, he, you know, and, and stuff like that. He was lacking because he had fleshly carnal things in there. He, he, he coveted. You, you understand? He had greed in there. You know, and he caused, and he, you know, he had his own agenda going on. But Yahweh used him in his gifts. So just because you have gifts and all this stuff, Yahweh used, don't mean that your love is right before Yahweh. And, and Bellum is not in heaven today, I believe, the Bible will tell you. You know what I mean? Amen? You know? But, but we're talking about love. Genuine love is what makes our works relevant. Amen? Hallelujah. And we're talking about being led of the Spirit. Matter of fact, hold your place in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3, and turn with me to Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, 14. We're talking about being led by the Spirit. For Paul says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. Led. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. My point I want to make here is that Paul, it's not, it doesn't just count that to have the Holy Spirit in your heart. But because you can have your Holy Spirit in your heart. You can, you know, you can have the gifts of the Spirit and all kinds of stuff manifesting in your life. But what counts is that you are led by the Spirit. That is what makes you be counted as Yahweh, as his children. And, and as his children, you know, you, like your Father, Heavenly Father, have the love that makes your works relevant in him. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Amen. You, can, you know, you can't get into heaven without the saying goes, the Holy Spirit, but you sure can go to, go to Lake of Fire with it if you're not led by it. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. And, you know, you look at, at Paul, he's talking to church people here. You know, there's, Yeshua said that in the last days, there will be many who say, Our Father, your, your Master, did not we do this in your name? Did we not do that? Did we, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? You know, did we not do many great works in your name? And he would say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. For I never knew you. That's what iniquity means. Workers of iniquity is lawlessness. They were not right. Yeah, these people had works. They were doing things, but they were not right. They were lacking in the love of Yahweh. Amen? They did not love Yahweh with all their heart and mind and soul, both inwardly and outwardly. They were not being led by the Spirit and letting the, the love of Yahweh be manifest, you know, through them. Amen? As they should. They, didn't, they were lacking in either the love of Yahweh and keeping the commandments of the, the love of Yahweh directly or loving him indirectly. You know, somewhere they were lacking. Amen? Hallelujah. And it benefited them nothing. And we know this because it says, ye workers of lawlessness. He calls them that. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Uh, and if you look at 1 Corinthians 13 too, I want you to notice something here. 1 Corinthians 13, 2, it says, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, these people even had faith. They had miraculous faith so that they could move mountains. These people perform, you know, here, perform miracles, Paul is saying. You know, just like the, the ones I, I told you about that Yeshua said, didn't I cast out demons? Didn't I prophesy? You know, and do all kind of manners of works. But they didn't have the, the, the love, you know? And there's something about, about faith I want you to learn. Turn with me over to Hebrews 11.
True faith, if you look at it, is going to have the, lo- the love that you need. True living faith, if you look at it. Hebrews 11. Most of you know that this is the faith chapter. Okay? We look here. Hebrews. Is everyone there? All right. Hebrews 11, chapter, I mean, chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, I want you to keep your mind on evidence, of things not seen. Now, I want to ask you, what is the, what is the, what is the evidence of faith? Ask yourself that question. All right? Now, he goes on in verse 2 and it says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. In other words, by this faith, by, you know, they retained something, a good report. Could it be that this good report is the evidence? Hmm. Let's go on. It says, verse 3, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Elohim, so that the things which are seen which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So then you see, now, now that the writer of Hebrews is saying that, that Yahweh in the beginning made the heavens and earth through faith. Faith in himself, you know. And, and it goes into it, how the works of Yahweh. Yahweh did good works. Through faith, the evidence of that faith was the good works Yahweh did as far as making the heavens and earth and all that there is therein. And then if you read, go on with the rest of the chapter, it goes into those who have gone before in faith, the pioneers of faith, and what describes what? Their good works that they did. So from this, you can basically say that the evidence of faith and good works are synonymous. Amen? From this, you can look at, it, at, at, at faith and, and, and say, hmm, without good works, do I have true faith? Okay, let's look at James. James chapter 2. Let's see what he has to say on the issue. James chapter 2. We're talking about works of love, works of love unto Yahweh. James chapter 2, good works. Hallelujah. We'll start with verse 14 and read through 26. It says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? See, James is talking about self-saving faith. The kind of faith that the people without love don't have. James is talking about saving faith. The kind of people that the people who said, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? The kind of faith that they did not have. They had, even though they had the kind of faith that did miracles and stuff, they did not have this because Yeshua said, you workers of lawlessness to them. So we look at this. Can the faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute or of daily food. Whoa, this sounds like loving your neighbor. We, we just talked about. Hmm. Hmm. And one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are, are needful to the body. Which the, What doth it profit? Huh? It sounds like. It sounds like, uh, like Paul now. He says, what does it profit? You know? It doesn't profit you. If, you. if you say you have faith, but don't show the works of Yahweh's commandment that to, to love your neighbor. Amen? Hmm. It says here, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. 18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. 
In other words, James is saying, I have evidence of my faith. You know, you can say you have faith, but I will show you the evidence of my faith, which is the works. Amen? 19. Thou believest that there is one Elohim. Amen? Thou doest well. And the devils also believe and tremble. In other words, this faith that we have is more than a mental ascent. Faith is more than just I believe in Yahweh and who he is. You know, faith is action. You know, the ABCs of faith, action based upon belief that, you know, Christ is forever true. Right? That Messiah, his, the work, the belief on the work of Messiah. Amen? Amen? That's what faith is. Action. Good works. Based on belief that Christ is forever true. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, the devils, they believe, they have mental assent in Yahweh, but they don't have true saving faith. They don't have the, the works of the, a love that, that's in Yahweh's law. But he says, but wilt thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? He says, wilt thou know, o vain man? You know, in other words, this man, his, his faith is in vain. You know, you can have faith without works, but you have dead faith. A dead faith. 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When, uh-oh, people don't like to hear that. But see, Paul's not talking about faith plus works. He's talking about a faith who that has within it evidence. Evidence of the work of, 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 the, of the love. You know? Amen? Hallelujah? It's like ragu. It's in there. Right? Faith is in there. True living faith has work is in there. Okay? You know, hallelujah, he says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Hallelujah. Seeing thou how faith wrought with his works, and by his works was, was faith made perfect. See, faith is made perfect. It's fulfilled by your works. Just like repentance Repentance is, is fulfilled and made perfect by conversion. Without conversion, you don't have true repentance. Well, without works, you don't have true faith. Amen? You know? You know, so it's, 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 it's the same thing. That's what Paul, I mean, that's what um, James is saying here. Hallelujah. And it says, The scripture was fulfilled which say, If Abraham believed Elohim and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. He had faith. He had that true living faith. That faith that had the works of love in them with, as evidence. Amen? The faith that loves your brother, your neighbor, and love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, and mind and soul, both outwardly and inwardly. Abraham, that kind, and it was puted to him as evidence, as, as righteousness. And he was called the friend of Elohim. We know that one of the things that Abraham did when before, you know, that Yahweh did with Abraham before he went down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah was he said, shall I not tell Abraham what I'm about to do knowing that he is my friend? Knowing that he is one that, the kind of man that will command his children to keep my laws, my statutes, my commandments. You know? This is the kind of man, faith that Abraham had. A faith that had evidence of good works. Amen? We see, we see then that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Just like your body, when your spirit leaves you, it's dead. So faith without the evidence within it of works is not living faith. The kind of faith that leads to life and that more abundantly, but it's dead faith. Amen? Praise Yahweh. See, people, James and Paul do not disagree. You know? They're just talking to two different audiences. But I won't get into that. That's something different. A little different, but hey, Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Well, so someone asked you, well, well, Pastor, 
do we do good works to deserve or earn salvation? No! We do not deserve salvation. We don't earn it. We know we don't do these good works to try to deserve something. We do them because He deserves it. Because He has more than earned it. You know, we do it because of the work He has done. His merits. Not, not so we can merit. We do it because He, though He is the Lord and Master of, of the universe, He came down and for us sinners who didn't deserve anything but condemnation in the lake of fire, He came down and did the work of a servant, sacrificing Himself with His blood. He bought us with a price. Right? We are no longer our own. And therefore, He created us so we can become a part of his body. And as his body, he deserves, what did Denise, you said he deserves nothing but what? The best, right? Nothing but the best. And therefore, he deserves what? He deserves his own love. He deserves himself. He deserves, amen. As a matter of fact, let me, let me turn, you guys turn with me here to, um, uh, let's see here. Turn with me to, uh, uh, one minute. <laughs> I think I lost my, my lost my place here. He turn with me to Ephesians two. One through ten. It tells us in Ephesians exactly why he created us for. This this hits the heart of the matter right here. Of why we were created. Ephesians 2 says, Hallelujah. And you have he quickened, verse 1, who were dead in trespasses of sin, where in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also ye all had, we all had our conversation, which means. Uh, conduct in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but Elohim who is rich in mercy hallelujah we're talking about his grace his mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us hallelujah even when we were dead in sins have quickened us together with messiah and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Messiah Yeshua, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kingdom toward us through Yeshua the Messiah. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. In other words, nothing we do of ourselves are we saved. It is the gift of of Yahweh is the work that he did. All right? Not of works, our works, not works of ourselves, hallelujah, but his work. All right? Hallelujah. Lest any man should boast. We can't boast. In verse 10, this, this, this is the point that I want to make of why we were created and became a part of it. He created us for we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua unto what? Good works. Amen? Works of the law, works of love, Works of loving Yahweh your Elohim. You know, Halia says, Good works which Yahweh hath before ordained that we shall walk in them. We are created, you know, and he deserves nothing much less but than the good works of loving Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, your mind, and soul. He deserves nothing less of loving your neighbor through, you know, and loving him through your neighbors. And, you know, and keeping all those commands, both inwardly and outwardly, as we're led by the Spirit. In and through us, his love shed abroad in our hearts. He deserves nothing less. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. And what is his best? Is the best that we can give him our own works? No. The, we can't, the best we can give him is not us. Paul said in Galatians, he said, I die so that Yeshua, not I that liveth, but it's Yeshua that liveth in me. The best we could give him is himself. The best we can give him, hallelujah, that he deserves is his character, his love, 
You know, the, the best we could give him is a work built through us, as he, you know, through his hands. The Bible said that he's building a house, a temple, made not with man's hands, but by his hands that will last for all eternity. Amen? And we know that we are the temple of Yahweh, both individually and collectively. And so as we allow the Holy Spirit, we yield to the Holy Spirit and allow him to work through us, to, you know, let Yeshua himself build hallelujah, his house, his temple. Hallelujah. That's what he deserves, and that's what we have to give him back. And Yeshua does this through love, his work. Only his work will stand, hallelujah, in the, you know, when the judgment comes. Amen? We, we, we build based on the pattern of what he has already done, his work. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. We love him with a love based on his love that he originally gave. Amen? Hallelujah? Denise said we must give him nothing less than our best. Our best is Messiah in us, the hope of glory. Giving it back. That's the only thing the Heavenly Father will accept into his kingdom. Is, is Messiah in us, the hope of glory. If he, if he, not, none of our own vain stuff will he accept. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans says that our flesh is enmity with him. It's not subject to his law, to his, his, his love, his character. Neither can it be. You know? The flesh cannot know Yahweh. And as, as a result, Yahweh cannot know or accept uh, the flesh. So we cannot give him anything. That will never, ever deserve anything. The only work that will ever deserve anything is the work of Yeshua the Messiah and what he did on Calvary for us. Amen? Hallelujah. If you look at, at Romans uh, chapter 8 with me, turn with me there for me for a minute. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, as we know, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Yeshua. Well, this is what it means to be in Yeshua. Is it means to love Yahweh with all your heart, mind, and soul. Hallelujah. To love him, you know, both inwardly and outwardly. To be in Yeshua means to love your neighbor as yourself and to keep and do good works of love. Hallelujah. These good works that we have to do. This is what to have that faith, that true living faith. You know, that faith that, that has as, as evidence good works of commandment keeping. That's what it means to, to, to be in Yeshua and, and have no condemnation. Hallelujah. That means to have a work that's built upon what Yeshua's done because he deserves nothing less but the best. That's what it means to be in Yeshua. To have, that way we have no condemnation because Yeshua, there is no condemnation to him because he never sinned. Amen? Hallelujah. And we look at verse, two, verse 8 of Romans chapter 8. It's, you know, it says that the flesh can please Yahweh, right? Does it? What, what does it say? The flesh cannot please Yahweh, right? And we know somewhere else in the Bible it says that without faith we cannot please Yahweh, right? So, we, so once again, put that together. True living faith. You know, you cannot truly, if you and I are in the flesh, we're, we don't, we're not in faith. And if we're not in faith, we're not in Yeshua at that moment in time. We're in the flesh. And so what we have to do is we have to repent, right? Because we are new creatures. Old things are passed away. And we need to go back and he will restore us, right? Because we need to trust him in faith that the Bible says he's faithful and true to restore, by clean, cleanse us of our sins through his blood. And we are once again in Messiah again. You cannot be in the flesh and, and Messiah at the same time. But Paul says it's impossible to be in the spirit and fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. We must build on what Yahweh and what Yeshua has built on. Look at Matthew's real quick with me. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, we'll start with uh, verse 21. Anyone, let me know when you're there, everyone. 
And we, 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 already, we already go over this, but I just want to go over it one more time. It says here, verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, this is Yeshua's own words, Master, Master, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeshua was talking about church people, people who went to church in their life. But he that doeth, what? The will of my Father which is in heaven. He that doeth good works. He that keeps the commandments, right? And we know that, that, that he said that many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we, have we not prophesied a name and cast out devils and a name done many wonderful works, as we mentioned before. And then will I profess to him, I, I, you know, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work lawlessness. Well, I want you to notice in verse 24, it talks about two foundations. You can build, he goes right into it. Therefore, it's a continuance on the same thought. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, what do what? Good works. Works of the law, of loving Yahweh your Elohim and loving your neighbor. Right? Both inwardly and outwardly. He that doeth them is like him, the wise man, that built his house upon a rock. And you know what happens, the rains descended, you know, and it stood. The rock of Yeshua, after the pattern of the work of what Yeshua has done. That's the only thing that will stand, you know, in, in, in Yahweh's presence. But see, these people, you know, who he said, depart me from, from me for workers of liquids, they were like the foolish man. And they built their foundation upon fleshly sand, quicksand. And, he, and of course, their house sank. Amen? Hallelujah. But like I said, the flesh is enmity with Yahweh. The flesh cannot, it's not subject to law, neither can be. The flesh does not know the true love, what the true love of Yahweh is. And therefore, Yahweh cannot know the flesh. So it's all about how we end. How we end this thing. You know? What, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, we can get saved and start out well. But Yeshua said the race is not to the strong or the swift, you know, but to those who endure to the end. We can start out in the spirit, get saved. But if we, if we go in, in, into the flesh and we do not repent of that, we do not be restored and be back in Yeshua, back in the faith, the true living faith, like we should be, if we end our life and die in our sins, then we will not be saved. Amen? But Because the race is to those who endure to the end. That's why the Bible says, do not grow weary in doing good works, and doing well, because we must end this thing well. You know, hallelujah? Because we don't want to hear the words, you know, we don't want to end in our flesh and, and come before Yahweh in Judgment Day, and, and he, instead of seeing a bride without spot or wrinkle, Instead of seeing his son, Yeshua, the Messiah, in us, living in us, he sees us in our flesh with all kinds of spots and wrinkles. And he says, look, wait a minute. Depart from me, you workers of iniquities, where I never knew you. Because he can't know you. He never knew the part of you that was in the flesh. That part of you, he can't know. He is not subject to him, to his law, his love, his personality, his character. Neither could it be. You know, and everything. Only part of you that he knew is not, is not the one that's standing before him. And that was his son, Yeshua, the Messiah. And, he, and that's not what he sees standing before him. We don't want to hear those words. Do we? No. Yahweh will accept nothing less but the best. He will accept nothing less but something that is holy as he is holy. Which is his son, Yeshua, the Messiah. The only one who is holy. We are, there's nothing holy about us. Amen? Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. So as we begin to break this down and everything, I want us to um, look at John. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. First, first John, my fault. Chapter 1. Uh, not chapter 1. Chapter 4. First John chapter 4.
This, this, this 1 John cap, chapter 4 basically synopsis, gives a little synopsis on this a little bit. I'm only going to pick out certain verses of it. We're not going to, we're not going to read it all. But um, start with, um, let's start with uh, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not Yahweh, for Elohim is love. In other words, he, don't do, he that does not do the first and second great commandments of loving Yahweh. You don't know Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's go to 16, 17. And we have known and believed the love that Elohim hath to us. For Elohim is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Elohim. And Elohim in him. In other words, what is this is saying the same thing in Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Yeshua. Well, how do we know that we're in Yeshua? Because we love. And we, you know, right? We keep the first and second great commandments. We keep the commandments of love, the works, the good works of love. Hallelujah. He, you know, because Yahweh is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Yahweh and Elohim in him. Amen. You know, because Yahweh deserves nothing less but the best. If we don't love him like we should, then we're in sin. We're in transgression of the law. And we need to repent. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, when? In the day of judgment. Because as he is, so we are in this world. Amen? The only way we can have boldness when we come on before Yahweh on Judgment Day is if we are as He is, if we are the best, which is, it is what's the reason why we must strive to reach the mark of perfection? We must, we must present to Yahweh Messiah in us, Messiah. He must, we must let His Holy Spirit, as we are led by Him, work and do the good works which will be imputed to us as righteousness. That's the only way we can go boldly before Yahweh. Yahweh, if we know that we have the best, because he deserves the best, not because we deserve it, because he deserves the best, based on what he has done for us. Amen? Let's go up to 20. If a man say, I love Elohim and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love Elohim who he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who would what? The first commandment, he who, would, who loveth Elohim, also the second commandment, loveth his brother also. It's all about why we keep the commandments, why they are relevant to our salvation. It's all about love. It's all about love of Yahweh. So that's what it's all about. This is why we're here today. That's why we were born. That's why little little baby has has a has a Yahu or Yaku whatever. That's why Hezi was born. Zeke was born, so he might learn to love Yahweh and be and, and bring forth the best that Yahweh deserves. That Yeshua in him and, and is dwell with Yahweh forever in His love. So Yahweh, he can hear Yahweh's word say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." You know, enter the joy of thy master. This is what it's all about in the end. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. To love Yahweh, we were created to do good works, keeping his commandments. Not because we deserve anything, not based on our, to, so we can merit anything, but because he deserves it. Amen? For what he's done for us. We, we need to praise him. And we need to thank him with the rest of our days. Hallelujah. And, and give them all a praise. I want us to sing a um, song here in a moment. Um, sing all on the altar. Someone could get that in a, in a book and let me know the number. Praise Yahweh.